Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back. Good morning. Can you see my screen, everyone? Online. Yes, we can see. Can we mute everyone? Yeah, so today we are going to discuss about introduction to servers and networks, right? So before going to cloud, first we need to understand these basics. These basics are very important, right? So in physical data centers, how we use servers, network, right? And the different devices, right? Yeah, so how the servers are configured, fine. Right? So we'll try to understand. So agenda here is uh, what is server types of servers, server client model, best practices, and server architecture. What is operating system, types of operating systems, what is network, types of networks, what is IP address, subnet mask, gateway, router, firewall, right? And failover, load balancer. So these are the very basic things. So if you understand this, you can easily handle cloud. Okay. So that is why we require this. Fine. Right? Yeah, today we are going to yeah, today we are going to cover up to here only, up to operating system, right? So tomorrow we'll work on networks. This will take one hour, right? Up to here it will take one hour. So we'll discuss about this. Fine. So basically, what is server? Anyone, what is server? Yeah. So last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we discussed on some demos, right? We, uh, yeah. DevOps introduction, question and answers, and cloud introduction, right? Yeah, so those are very important. Whoever not received that videos, just WhatsApp me, I'll provide you that videos. Fine? Right? Yeah. What is server? Anyone? Stores the information. Stores the information. Right. Fine. Right. Yeah, a server is a computer that serves information to other computers, right? Other computers called client computers, clients, either desktop or laptop. Those are clients. Normally, by using laptop or desktop, we can connect our servers, right? So, yeah, server is a computer that serves information to other computers called clients. Can connect to a server through either a local area network or a wider network such as the internet right so lan connectivity or wan connectivity we use right so to connect our servers server is a primary system so which will have higher compute computing power right so higher storage high capacity storage high capacity cpu ram right so normally when we send the request to server we get the response from server right so it is a central servers normally in data centers we use Every developer testers, every DevOps engineer will connect to the servers, right? Fine. Next one, types of servers. What are the types available? Right? So these are the different types of servers available. First one is Blade Server and Rack Server, Tablet Server, right? So basically, what is Blade Server? We'll go one by one here. Yeah, so Blade Server is a modular server that allows multiple servers to be hosted in a smaller area, right? So here there is a container. Instead of the container, we inserted some thin servers, small units. These are all blade servers, right? So these are the thin servers, so which are very high performance servers, right? So normally these servers we use in large data centers, enterprise level data centers, we see this blade servers. So these are the servers which are having very high computing power right yeah so these servers are physically thin typically only have cpu memory integrated network controllers right and also sometimes storage drives in build so these servers will not have any storage but how the servers will store the data external storage will be connected external storage will be connected back end right so some servers will have yeah Sometimes we have storage also inbuilt. So blade servers often seen in large data centers, 
enterprise level like google right uhg atnt microsoft this type of companies they use blade servers which are very high performance servers right so next one is a rack server rack server is a traditional server so most of the data centers we use rack servers only right yeah a rack server is a server mounted inside of your rack rack servers are typically general purpose servers that support a broad range of applications and computing right so most of the data centers they use rack servers only so instead of your rack we insert one server and we connect power electricity right so we start the server deploy the applications operating system drivers and patches whatever we require right and we can move to the we can move to production right so rack servers are general purpose servers so most of the companies most of the project teams they are using rack servers only next one tower server right so a tower server is a computer that is inbuilt in an operating cabinet this is bit water server tower server is bit water server that stand alone and that that is designed to designed to function as a server so normally yeah before rack servers we used to use tower, tower servers in tower servers only one server will be configured instead of that one monitor one cp one uh, mouse one keyboard will be connected right so this is bit world server tower server is a bit world server right so these are the most of the time we use in real time projects these are the servers right so blade servers rack servers tower servers yeah next one client server model what is client server model normally so we connect servers using either desktops or laptops through either a local area network or a wide area network right so when we send request to the server it will give a response right so through network we can access the server so developers whatever the code they develop whatever applications they develop they directly stored in the server only when so whenever they store the information into server that can be accessible through network anyone can access that right from any region they can access from anywhere right yeah so the data is stored in the central location so any team member they can access the data right this is another model client server model so either laptop or desktop or even tab also we can use to connect our servers through internet or larger network local network right next one server architecture so when we talk about this this is very important so how the servers are built how the servers are configured in the data centers so how it is uh, we'll see that fine in server architecture is the foundational layout or model of a server based on which a server is created and are deployed it defines how server is designed right so this is very important so i give you two examples here server architecture so initial stage of implementation initial stage of implementation this is a first phase of implementation in 90s and the early 2000 how the server architecture Yeah, in first phase of implementation, in 90s and early 2000, how the project teams they used to configure the servers, right? We'll try to understand. So this is very important. So stage wise, we'll discuss about the server architecture because we are going to work on cloud, right? So we need to understand these basics. Okay? So for example, in 90s and early 2000, how the servers are, how the servers configured, right? So for example, we have four applications are there. four applications like java git and maven 
and Tomcat. So these are the four applications are there. So in 90s and early 2000, how they configured servers, how they implemented the right water stand, right? Yeah. So by the time for each application, they used to take one server. Not in all applications, same server. So each application they used to take one server. So for example, four applications are there. They are taking four servers, for example. They took four servers here. These are the four servers, right? So by the time in 90s and early 2000, highest capacity of the hardware, hard drive, highest capacity of the hard drive, one GB. One GB is the highest capacity storage. These are all one GB servers, for example, okay? Yeah. So here, four applications, four servers, right? So in first server, they installed Java. So Java will take nearly, for example, 300 MB. By the time, less, less size, right? Yeah. It, it takes 300 MB. Another 600 MB will be wasted, right? 700 MB, not 600 MB, 700 MB will be wasted. So Java will take uh, 300 MB, other space will be, other space definitely we don't use normally. So for example, we have one GB server, only one application we installed. So remaining space we don't use, right? So they used to use like this. By the time, they used to configure like this. So one application, one server, right? So next one, second one, Git. They install Git on the server, and this will take, this takes 400 MB, for example. So remaining space, 600 MB, wasted here. Next one, Maven. Maven takes uh, some 500 MB, something. Remaining 500 MB space will be remaining space is wasted. And also Tomcat. Some 550 MB. Yeah, 450 MB, this should be here, right? So like that, like this, every project team, they used to take uh, for each application, one server, right? So due to this, what will happen? So utilization is very less, but costing is more, right? Because by the time 90s and early 2000, hardware costing, it's a too much cost, right? So by the time even lab, uh, even desktop also, right? Yeah. Hardware costing, it is very higher cost, but usage is less. By the time uses very less, right? So due to this, project teams unable to take the hardware. They, yeah, they they procured some servers, for example. They used to spend more billing for the hardware by the time. That is why. So this concept is failed. This concept is failed concept. This is failed. Slowly, slowly, in second phase of implementation, second phase of implementation, what they did? In after 2000, in second phase of implementation, they used to take higher capacity server, one server, one higher capacity server, right? So they used to install all the applications on single server, right? Yeah, so this is uh, the server. Yeah, in the server, they installed Java, Git, 
Maven, and also Tomcat. Right? So on single server, they installed four applications here. So here, what will happen? Java user will access Java application, Git user access Git application, Maven user will access Maven application, Tomcat user will access Tomcat application. So all four members, they access their respective application, right? So here, all the applications are installed in only one server. Here, what will happen? What happened here? So this Java user may access Git application also. Git user may access Maven application also. Maven user may access Tomcat application also. There may be chances to access the other applications because so four members are logged into same server. Four applications are deployed on same server. Security will be there. Still, there may be chances to log into the to connect to other applications, right? So, for example, four people are staying in one flat. Two basic flat. Two people are in one bedroom. Two people are in other bedroom, right? So, commonly, the four access the four the four people can access they can access kitchen and dining, right? Commonly, the four people can access kitchen and dining. The same way, whenever we deploy applications on same server, there may be chances to access other applications also because they are using same credentials to log into the server, right? That is one drawback. And also, so if the server is crash, this server is crash, what will happen? All the applications will be gone, right? So that is why this is also failed concept. This is also failed, right? Yeah. Next one, next is, yeah, phase of implementation, third phase of implementation, right? Slowly, slowly. Project teams move to virtualization, virtual environment, right? So virtual servers. Virtual servers. We can say VMA, Citrix, and uh, hypervisor, right? So different virtual server, virtual environment server. This is the third phase of implementation. Yeah. So virtual servers, right? Yeah, so when we talk about virtual servers, still we are using virtual servers in projects, right? VMware, Citrix, or hypervisor, we are still using, right? In virtual environment, how the servers configured, right? So we'll try to understand. In the virtual environment, we take one physical server, which is high capacity server. So this is a base OS, we can say, base operating system, right? So on top of this, what we will do? We install one application. Yeah, which is like VMware or Hypervisor, Hyper-V or Citrix. So this is software. Simply can say software. So VMware, Hypervisor, Citrix, these are the softwares, right? So when we install this package on this server, this will allow you to create virtual servers. So on top of this, you can create virtual servers like this. Yeah. So these are the virtual servers. So on top of base server, base OS, you can install some software, which is VMware. So on top of that, we can create virtual servers. So these are all virtual servers. These are all virtual servers. 5 into 5, 25 servers are there. 
right? So here, what we can do, we can deploy, we can deploy different uh, operating systems like uh, Windows 2016 and the Linux RXL, Red Linux, and Ubuntu, CentOS. Right. Windows 2019. Right. So these are all servers, right? So different uh, operating systems you can install, different uh, applications also can install on these servers, right? So these 25 servers will work individually. But these 25 servers, where these servers will take the uh, resources from where? From base OS only, base server server, right? Yeah, so base server will have higher capacity hardware like 32 GB RAM and 16 core CPUs. And a hard drive like 10 TB. Right? So like this, this base server will have higher capacity hardware. So this virtual servers we use they use base server hardware, right? So this hardware will be shared to the 25 servers, right? Yeah. Fine. So here what will happen normally so when we when we want to install any operating system, we use ISO image. So when we want to deploy any operating system. We use ISO image. ISO means International Standardization Organization, right? So this is a full package, operating system full package, right? So when we use ISO image, so in that ISO image, all the drivers, plugins, and the graphics, paintbrush, media player, notepad, everything will be installed. For example, normal thing. So when you want to install any operating system in your laptop, what we will do? We copy the image into pen drive, we connect to the laptop and configure as a portable drive and we can install the operating system. The same way, server side also we use ISO image to install the operating system, right? Yeah, so here, this ISO size is 6 GB2, minimum 6 GB2, 18 GB. So minimum size would be 6 GB, maximum 18 GB. So different flavors are there, right? Flavor to flavor size will be changed, right? Yeah. So the size or an average, for example, or an average, you can say 10 GB for each server. 10 into we have 25 servers are there. 250 GB we have to spend for only operating system. The servers are 25, right? 5 into 5. So 10 GB for each server storage occupied for operating system. 10 into 25, 250 GB only for operating system. So on top of that, again, we need to, we, yeah, we need to install Java, Git, Maven applications, whatever we require. So plugins, drivers, whatever required, right? So this will use more space for the applications, operating system, right? Yeah. So that is one small drawback here. So in virtual environments, we need to spend more storage. Storage costing is a bit higher, right? And also, one more important thing here is, so when you want to restart this server, when you want to restart any physical server or virtual server, this will take minimum four minutes to eight minutes. Yeah, why this much of time it will take? Because it will check memory, updates, when you restart the server, right? So normally client will not uh, will not wait this much of time. For example, Flipkart server is there. Flipkart server. So if the server is down for eight minutes, business will be impacted, right? That is why client will not wait for four to eight minutes. That should be restarted within one minute maximum, right? Yeah. So these are the drawbacks in virtual servers. Still we are using in our projects, virtual servers, right? Yeah, and one more important thing here is uh, deployment 
time and down time is i so what is down time anyone down time maintenance time it's a maintenance time yeah deployment time means if you want to deploy any applications that will take some time right so in virtual environment deployment time down time is very higher right so this much of time four to eight minutes down time client will not accept in real time projects right so business will be impacted right these are all drawbacks are there but still we are using virtual servers in projects because so yeah before cloud virtual virtualization is the it was popular virtualization right yeah so this is third phase of implementation here we have some drawbacks right so many drawbacks are that is why project teams are looking for docker containers right so that is fourth phase of implementation which is the docker container which is a docker architecture right so this is the very advanced one currently most of the project teams they are looking for docker containers okay so because currently we are using digital applications what is digital application what are the digital applications we are using currently like flipkart amazon shopping site right reliance trends misho mintra these are all digital sites and also jepto right danjo these are all digital sites right so when we book any groceries or any products they are delivering within few minutes sometimes right so danjo 10 minutes maximum jepto like 10 minutes that is also within 10 minutes the products will come to your door steps right so because back end containers are there docker and kubernetes is their back end they are using very core applications back end that is why when you place the order immediately that will be processed the process will be started right yeah so docker docker architecture what will happen here we'll try to understand so in docker same way same as virtualization we take one docker server here we take one docker server right so on top of this we we configure one application which is uh, we configure one software which is docker image docker image so this will allow you to create containers so these are the containers yeah so here what we will do these are the containers right different containers these are all containers so in this containers we deploy different operating environments right like here in this container we can deploy ubuntu rhcl centos and windows like this right whatever operating system you want to you can configure but here what will happen whenever we deploy any operating environment it will take only the container will take only bin and lib files bin and lib binary and library files only right so here the size of the container operating system size is 200 mb only within 200 mb operating system will be configured but here 6 gb to 18 gb right and also when you want to restart this container 
within 15 seconds this will be restarted enter will be restarted it's very faster right right yeah and also here deployment and downtime is very less very less right so when you want to deploy applications quickly it will be deployed right so when you want to restart your container quickly it will be restarted for example one of the developer working on this container he restarted the container he doesn't understand whether it is restarted or not that much of faster right yeah so these containers are lightweight very lightweight right so in this containers microservices we use microservices microservices means so very small applications we use right so one application divided into different pieces microservices right yeah so currently docker are, docker containers are very advanced most of the project teams are there using docker containers to deploy the applications because so time is reduced here and also important thing here is costing less costing when the project team is migrated to docker containers is very less costly right so we yeah client always look for the costing only cost cutting right so whatever applications we are we are using on virtual servers those are migrating to containers because of the faster cost saving in this containers we deploy micro microservices so when we talk about microservices right so let us go to browser for example so this is a flipkart site right this is flipkart so flipkart is deployed on docker containers right so we are talking about microservices right so when i click on this home for example these are all microservices these are all microservices okay for example click on batch sheets these are all microservices so each microservice will deploy on one container right so in in docker we have two types of applications are there. tightly coupled loosely coupled tightly coupled means if one microservice is down entire application will be down that is tightly coupled loosely coupled means all the microservices will work individual one microservice is down application will not be down for example this microservice is down right so entire application will not be down right so back end developers they work on the containers they upgrade the spices they connect the container why we require microservices basically microservices are very important here because back end they upgrade individual containers whenever they need it for example so this batch cost is 944 944 right yeah so they give 25 28% off something right so if they want to give 50% off what will happen back end application team they log in into this particular container they modify the pricing so when they modify and when they upgrade that will be reflect to the reflected to the this microservice right so this is lightweight very faster upgradation modification is also very faster right so currently we are using digital sites right because of docker and kubernetes only so in lockdown time no one no one went out and no one took the products physically right all all are used like this all around because of kubernetes docker online products are coming so very faster so when i yeah i booked one mobile recently uh, like two days back one plus mobile within four hours they delivered within four hours right so it's very faster right Any questions, anyone up to here? Anyone having any questions? 
So these are all very basic things, important things. Is it clear to you, everyone? Can yeah. you explain this makeup? Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Can we explain? Yes, we can actually. Yes. Right. So when we talk about Docker, we'll go deep right. Docker will take seven days. Right. So seven hours it will take. Docker. So while yeah, while working on Docker, we'll go deep right. So Docker, Kubernetes, these are very hot. Currently, so these are very uh, core tools. Currently, most of the project teams they are looking for Docker Kubernetes. So if you are good in Docker only, you can easily crack your engine. If you are good in only Kubernetes, you can easily crack your engine. Right? Because currently, most of the applications they are using Docker and Kubernetes. Right? Any questions? Clear, right, everyone? Online? Yeah, clear. Thank you. Right. Next one is, uh, yeah, let us move to. Right. So this architecture will go deep drive. We'll go deep drive while working on the Docker, right? Yeah, next one. What is the operating system? Anyone, what is the operating system? Any laptop or desktop or any server. Without operating system, we cannot connect, right? So what is operating system, anyone? Operating system is a interface between user and the computer hardware. It is an interface, it is a mediator. Because hardware always understand binary language, binaries. What is binary? Zeros and ones, zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. 111 like that, right? So hardware, our computer hardware will understand, hardware understand only binary language, but the human will not understand binaries. That is why we required one mediator, which is nothing but operating system, right? See here. So operating system is an interface between user and the computer hardware. The hardware of the computer cannot understand the human readable language as it works on binaries, that is zeros and ones. In such case, we need an interface which can translate human language to hardware and vice versa for effective communication. Right? We require one interface to communicate. Right? See here. So here we have hardware and end user. In between, we require operating system to interact with the hardware. Yeah. Next one. Types of operating systems. What are the types available? First one is a single user, single tasking operating system. What is single user, single tasking operating system? Right? So, for example, here MS DOS. So, in MS DOS, only one, one user can log into the system and you can perform only one task at a time. Multiple users cannot log in at a time in MS DOS. Microsoft data operating system. So it is a old operating system. Right? Only one user can log into the system and it can perform only one task at a time. Right? So this is nothing but single user, single tasking operating system. Second one, single user multitasking operating system. What is this? So one user can log into the system and it can perform multiple tasks at a time. So which is nothing but Windows. In Windows, normally, when we log into the system, while browsing the internet, we can run background audios, right? While working on some paint brush, we can run background audios, right? So one user can log into the system, he can perform multiple tasks at a time, which is nothing but single user, single task, uh, single user, multitasking operating system. Next one, multi-user multitasking operating system. What does it mean? So multiple users can log into the system. They can perform multiple tasks at a time, right? So which is nothing but Linux and Unix, 
right? So normally in real-time projects, most of the servers we use Linux only. We don't use Windows servers. So for example, we have thousand servers in our data center, right? In which 950 servers, Linux servers only. Only 50 servers, Windows servers, right? So desktop, laptops, we use Windows, but server side we use Linux only. Why we use Linux backend? What are the importance here? Anyone? Because multiple users can log in the system. Okay, yeah, important thing. Yeah, one more thing, secure, security, right? So whenever any threats released, any virus released, directly attack to the Windows first. But Linux servers will not have any. Yeah, it will attack to Linux also, but 5% only. But 90% effect to the Windows servers. Okay, and also Windows servers. So, yeah, it's costly repairs. Windows servers costly repairs, right? And also crashes, more crashes in Windows server crashes. But Linux servers, no costly repairs, no crashes, right? So Linux servers are very secure because so when we deploy any production applications, critical applications, right? Those applications should be secured, right? So client always look for the security. For example, bank is there, banks. They always look for the security. If any security is, uh, security is unable to provide the cloud or any automation, what will happen? For example, bank is using cloud servers, AWS servers. AWS is unable to provide the security. What will happen? Business will be impacted. Right, so by the time what will happen, definitely they will switch to other other model. That is why security is the very important here. Right? Yeah. So most of the data centers they are using Linux only backend. Networking part uh, we'll discuss tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, so we are going to work on three cloud platforms, right? AWS, Azure, and GC. Google Cloud Platform. So if you are good in only one platform, you can build any platform, right? So this is, for example, I'll show you AWS console. Still, we are in basics only, not at started cloud. I just want to show you. Okay. Yeah. See here, how to log in, how to create account. I'll show you one more. Yeah. While working on this, don't confuse me. So, this is a AWS cloud platform. AWS cloud. Okay, in the AWS cloud, we create infrastructure, we connect infrastructure, we deploy the applications, right? We configure the applications on AWS. So we don't install any applications in our local system, right? So directly you can connect to the cloud, you can work on cloud only, right? We require for laptop, internet connectivity, that's it. We don't need to buy any licensing also, yeah. Okay, so this is AWS cloud platform. So in this, we have different services are there. So we'll go deeper in while working on this. Uh, yeah, so day after tomorrow, tomorrow we work on network basics. Day after tomorrow, how to create AWS account, right? How to check the services, we'll walk through the console, day after tomorrow. Day after tomorrow, so we don't start anything. So we just walk through the console, how to create account, what are the things available, we'll go one by one. Right, so this is AWS console, and the next one, this is the Azure console. This is Microsoft Azure. So all the platforms are same, nothing is there here. Just a terminology will be different, right? So here we have, these are all services. 
different services right so cloud is very easier very simple to create infrastructure to connect cloud to work on the cloud it is very easier very simple okay yeah so in this we can yeah these are the services different services we have these are the different services available here fine next one is uh, google cloud platform this is google google cloud platform so these are all services these are all services right so why we require three platforms here why we require why we are going to learn three platforms here because every platform for example aws is a one brand Azure is a one brand, GCP is a one brand. For example, we have different supermarkets now, right? So normal more is there, Aplodeep is there, and Dmart is there. Different costing, different standards. All are same, different standards, right? So some customers, they look for the AWS services, bit faster services. AWS is compared with all other all other platforms. AWS is a bit faster, so quality. Also, costing also high. AWS services costing also high, quality also high, right? So normally North America customers and uh, Europe region customers they use AWS services, right? So they yeah they spend more billing to the servers, they get quality and uh, Middle East customers, right? Europe customers, they look for the Azure, Azure servers. Bit lesser costing, right? And the GCP, APAC region, Middle East also, Europe also some customers, they are looking for the GCP. GCP is a bit cheaper. Compared with AWS, Azure, GCP is cheaper costing. All are same functionality, but performance wise, some difference will be. Right, so branding three different brands. Right, so that is why every cloud platform they are using at least two. Uh, every automation, at least they are using two platforms. Every automation in our project, we are using three AWS, Azure, GCP. These are very popular. Three, right? So we have 25 more clouds are there. Those are small players, still they are growing. Okay. So these three are very popular. So if you learn these three, you can fit for any cloud. Okay, that is why we designed like this. Okay. Yeah, so that is why you need to concentrate on AWS first. If you are good in AWS, you can easily handle Azure GCP also. AWS is the blueprint for all the platforms. Fine. Any questions, anyone? Anyone join today for the session? Anyone yes, join? I have joined today. Uh, Rama Anujit, I have joined today. Fine, fine. Can you provide your uh, WhatsApp yeah. number and email address oh. in the chat? Okay. I'll send it. My, yeah. my mobile number is 9642117111. Is my mobile number. So, anyone? Okay. Yeah. Not having this number, you can take down. This is my personal number. You can save this number. Whoever joined today, first session, can you share your WhatsApp number and email address? Yeah, so WhatsApp group already created. Okay, in that group, 20 more than 20 people already joined. Added, right? So, whoever not added, you can add today itself. 
you can make the feed if you are interested and you can add into whatsapp group once you make the feed you can send me the screenshot once you send the screenshot i'll add into whatsapp group okay so because uh, in the group only updates are we are sharing the updates in the group, right so that is why so everyone yeah whoever not added so already added people uh, ignore this uh, announcement whoever not added so those you can make the fee by today and you can add into whatsapp group so otherwise the link will be changed from tomorrow right yeah so you cannot connect fine so we were not having the demo recordings just whatsapp me i'll provide you last three sessions demo videos so that just go through them fine so any questions anyone around those uh, demo links will be available uh, till the three months right or you will be uh, the demo section you will be providing the links for the demo section right already you have provided the link for three demo section those links will be accessible uh, every i mean within three months we can access it right after three months you will um, disable the taxes no no you can download you can download into your laptop oh this will be uh, uh, links will be available till uh, like 10 days 12 days after that that's, that will be expired things will be expired okay. yeah everyone can download into your laptop and you can save you save that videos so you explained uh, deployment markers are there for public hybrid community and uh, private Hybrid is a combination of public and community. Your voice, your voice is not audible. Can you check your mic? I understand your question. Right? Can you sir, check your mic? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, please. Yes. Now it is fine. Uh, so, what deployment models are there now? Uh, can you give an example for public model deployment? Right. right. So, deployment model. Deployment cloud deployment models were discussed in last session, right? So public cloud example, she's asking. Okay. So public cloud is a AWS cloud, Azure cloud. These are public through internet you can access. Those are public cloud, right? Then what the is the is, between uh, public and private? Mm, uh, that okay. is also Mantra, Amazon shopping. What is the difference? Public and private difference, right? So private mm -hmm. cloud is a our local cloud, on-premises cloud. For example, public network, private network. What is the difference here? Public network we can access through internet. Private network we cannot access through internet, right? We can access yes. through only internet. Within the organization, we use the private servers, private okay. cloud. So hybrid cloud means combination of both public and private. Community cloud means government cloud. Yeah. Fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Any other questions, anyone? Yeah, so tomorrow we'll work on uh, networking concepts, right? So tomorrow we work on networking. Yeah, day after tomorrow we'll start working on cloud. Slowly, slowly we'll enter into cloud. Okay. Yeah, so whoever not make the fee, you can make by today itself. Otherwise, tomorrow onwards, link will be changed, right? Yeah, the link will be posted in the group only. Fine. Right? Yeah, so we stop here. Fine. Right? So tomorrow we we'll connect same timing. Fine. Right? If you have any questions, you can WhatsApp me, you can call me. So we'll discuss. Fine. Right? Yeah, so we stop here. Fine. Right? Thank you all.